Everybody, my expect the comics and I'm back. This time I got a nice sized haul from when I went to the Connecticut Comic Crawl. If you're interested in seeing what I picked up, stay tuned for that intro. Alright, so welcome back. If you haven't already, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that bell notification so when I do put out some content, you gain in a timely fashion. So um piggybacking off of my uh, cliff. Cliffs Con um, haul, small haul, but um, I ended up linking up with Everett Otto from Three Men in the Basement, and he ended up inviting me to the Secret Comic Crawl in Connecticut. Uh, this was uh, invite only, and they do this, I don't know, maybe a couple of times a year, where they go to three comic shops, um, and they, usually the last shop is Sarge's, and uh, they go down in the basement and hunt. Um, there was, I think a little over 20, 21, I think 20, 20 to 24 people. I forget offhand, um, at the crawl. And we started off at Richie's comic cabana and, um, that's where we all like met up. And then we went to two other shops. So, um, I didn't take any footage. Um, I think if you look at Everett Otto's, uh, on three men in the basements, a uh, channel, You'll be able to see some of the footage. He also did some lives on IG as well. So you can see like the three places. But well, Richie's Comic Cabana was the first shop we ended up going to. Um, met with some great community members. I um, ended up hanging out with my buddy John. Uh, John Ross. He's a great guy from Rhode Island. Uh, I think we were the only two Rhode Islanders that went over there. But uh, people from Massachusetts, Rhode Island, Connecticut, New York, New Jersey. Um, and I think one other place. All, you know, drove down there to Connecticut for the comic crawl. It was a great time. Um, got to meet a ton of new community members, which was one of my big goals for the channel this year, was to meet more community members. And I met like, I don't know, 20 or so new people. Uh, so that was cool. Um, so the first comic shop, great shop. Uh, I think he was giving us around 20, 25% off, except for the wall books. Um, didn't get a chance to pick up anything there. Um, there wasn't anything really particular I was looking for, but there was some great books and I believe for new, uh, free comic book day, he's doing a great discount, um, which is buy one, get one half off of wall books. If I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong, but, um, but if you go on uh, Richie's mm -hmm. comic cabana, you can uh, check that out for more info. Um, the second shop I went to was the brick I think brick house. Brickhouse Comic Shop, which is a shop that is only open, I think, every other weekend or for, you know, special invitation, whatever it may be. But uh, they only open up on, um, on every other weekend. Really cool shop. You walk in there. Um, there's a big wall of, like, long boxes after long boxes. Um, they had some 75-cent bin um, boxes. or No, it's not 75-cent. 75% off bins, which I didn't, I didn't check out. There was so many books, so many books there. Um, I went straight to the, the key wall book, like the keys, which were half off of the lung boxes. Um, so I started off with that section. They also had some wall books. They also had some dollar books, which were in the corner and they did a really cool raffle, which uh, I believe was $25 or 20, I forget, 20, $25, something like that. For a chance to win um, a 9.4 graded Batman Adventures 12. Um, so that was pretty cool. So I didn't win it. <laughs> but um, Otto did that live for the live drawing to see uh, for the winner. Um, so congrats on that. Um, so that was fun. I'll show you the books I got from the Brickyard House comic shop. Something, um, and then uh, we'll finish off with the last one. So I got just shy of a short box. Um, the majority of the books was from the last comic shop, but the majority of my spending came from the brick, the brick house. So, uh, I'll start off with those. Some really, really, uh, cool books that they had there. Sorry. So, uh, in no particular order, I had to rebag and board all this stuff just because, um, it just makes it easier for me to just rebag and board and, you know. And just write down so any key significance or anything like that. It just makes it easier for me when I when I catalog stuff. 
All right, so uh, I'm just going to show off the first book. Oh, cool. All right, so this is um, Fantastic Four, issue number 244. This is, um, uh, shoot, what do you call this? Oh, first Frankie Ray. Um, first Frankie Ray as Nova. Is that right? I could be wrong. Um, which is uh, one of the Heralds of Galactus. Uh, a good amount of spec with this book. Um, so, saw that there. It was a good price. I think it was... Um, so, everything was half off. This was 30 bucks. I ended up getting 15 bucks. It's a newsstand, which doesn't really matter. It's from 1982. Um, but it's in pretty good, pretty good shape. It does have a little, you know, roll there on the side that could be pressed out. But for 15 bucks, I thought that was a great pickup. Next book. Um, there was a lot of heat with this book, maybe sometime earlier last year. And, um, basically because it had, it was attached to a Michael B. Jordan project. Um, it's going to be down, down the road, but, uh, this is static. Number one, first appearance of static shock. Um, this was the, I think it was the collector's edition because I had all like the stuff in there. Yeah. Um, which yeah, it's in the back. Yeah. So I, I took it out of the poly bag just cause sometimes the poly bags, you know, end up adding more damage to the book than, than what we want as collectors. So I took it out and it listed for 40 bucks. Obviously everything's half off. So it was 20 bucks. So uh, that's pretty sweet. And it's in, uh, there's some, you know, some spine tick, a couple of spine ticks, but, um, they don't appear to be color breaking. So, um, Maybe a potential contender to send off for grading. You know, maybe a 9-4. 9-4 or better. We'll see. So some of these books I will end up getting pressed and will be sent out for a submission later. Just because some of the value that I got for some of these books were uh, really good. You know, definitely a, a great, great shop to... Uh, just the comic crawl in general was just a fantastic experience. This is just a cool cover because I like... I like um, Flag covers are really cool. Um, this character is known for having some amazing flag covers. And uh, if you don't know offhand what I'm saying, you'll know right off the bat when I show you. And um, this is Superman. Uh, Superman issue number 53. Really cool flag cover. This is from 1991. Um, let me see. What else can I tell you? Cover by Jerry Ordway. And if you can see there, the Roman numeral two. This is the second printing. So pretty hard to find in the second printing. Um, don't really know what this commands. Maybe $25 or so. Ended up getting this for $12.50. It was listed at $25. All right, next book. Um, I've talked about this book before. I, this is my second or third copy. I don't know offhand. I, I can't remember. But uh, this is my favorite uh, Green Lantern, and uh, this is Green Lantern issue number forty-eight. Obviously, Green uh, first appearance of Kyle Rayner. He's not on the cover. This is Hal Jordan, but uh, this is the first appearance of Kyle Rayner. Um, this was it's in pretty good shape too. It does have a little it needs to be pressed a little bit, a little spine from stacking, um, but it looks to be in crispy condition. Outside of that little spine roll there that can be pressed out. This came out in 1994. Great run. Uh, Daryl Banks cover. But um, 750 Yeah. Under 10 bucks. That's a buy all day. Uh, one book I would, I would like to get this book in the, uh, the DC Universe label. I don't have this one in the DC. I do have issue. I want to say it's issue... 49, 50, I think 49 and 51 in the DC logo. And I think 55, but not but not that one. So I'll be, if I find that in a while, I'd love to have it one day. Um, next book, really cool book. Never seen this in a while before. This is Gears of War issue number one. Um, as you can see, it's a new stand, first printing. This is, well, I don't know if it's a I don't know. I'm not sure offhand. Yeah, it is a newsstand because um, 
because of the uh, blocks. Yeah, the Blockbuster exclusive. So when was the last time you saw something with Blockbuster, right? That's pretty cool. Um, Gears of War. I loved playing this game when I was a kid. Really cool. Uh, obviously with the, you know, kind of like the video games going becoming hot series like The Last of Us becoming hot. Gears of War, I believe, has some property attachment to it. I'm not sure offhand. But um, this uh, Blockbuster exclusive is really cool. They had, I think, three or four copies there at the uh, at Brickyard. Uh, Brick, Brick House. I keep on saying Brickyard. It was Brick House um, shop. And, uh, yeah, three or four copies there. I bought just one. It was listed at 30 bucks. So I paid 15 bucks. And, um, I don't know, it, it, it's in sh sharp, sharp condition. It's, I'd say it's a contender. I have to look in the back, but like I said, some of these I'll end up sending out. Um, the next book I was kind of shocked to see there because, uh, you know me, I like picking up Sonic books in the wild, Sonic the Hedgehog books, especially for my son. He loves, uh, Sonic the Hedgehog and I try to pick some up for him when I can. Mainly the newer stuff because the uh, original stuff from the Archie run are super hard to find in the wild. At Brick House, I've never seen so many Sonic the Hedgehog comic books in my life uh, as I did in that in that shop. There were tons, tons of them, and some really, really you know low print, um, high ratio comics there as well. But I only picked up two. The other one I gave to my son. Um, so he's already, he has it somewhere, so I won't be able to, uh, to show off that book because he's, it's already been well read. <laughs> but, um, uh, Sonic the Hedgehog issue number 39. And, um, what's significance about this book? This character right here, this is the first appearance of Mecha Sonic, a mechanized version from Dr. Robotnik. So it's Sonic the Hedgehog, but he gets mechanized by Dr. Robotnik. Um, it's a cool, you know, bad version of Sonic the Hedgehog that fights uh, Tails, Amy Rose, and so forth. What's the added kicker to this book is it's the direct edition. So typically in the 90s books, you want to look for the newsstands. I believe this is later 90s as well. I want to say like 95, 96, 97, something like that. I could be wrong. But for some particular reason... The direct edition for this book is super low print. If you look on eBay, the vast majority of these books are newsstand. I think there's only one other book that's direct edition. So to find this book in direct edition, I was kind of, I was like, wow, super hard to find. Um, and it was 30 bucks. I paid 15 bucks for it. So that's, that's crazy. Crazy good price. Not a 98. This book in a 90 would be super expensive. Um, but for the price... But 15 bucks, you can't really go wrong with that. That's that's great. Uh, this book probably is right in this current condition, it's probably like a hundred dollar book. Uh, next book, what do we got? Uh, oh, this was a cool book. I've never owned this book. Um, I came close to buying this book once before, and uh, and yeah, saga, saga number one. Um, you can see it's not a full comic size, and this is because it's the Turkish, the Turkish foreign variant, um, saga number one, had this at a hundred dollars. So I paid 50 bucks for it. It's in really nice shape. Does have a little spine tick there, but you know, with these white covers, you can, you can press these out as long as it's not like an egregious, like spine tick. Um, I'm going to, you know, get this pressed out and send it out for grading. The, you know, the Turkish variant, I'm, I'm, not really in it when it comes to Saga. I don't really know how rare some of these variants are. But I think the Turkish variant is one of the harder ones to get. Um, I defer to my buddy, uh, I think, uh, Comic Man Andy. Because he's I think he's the uh, Saga guy. So he would know. Next book. Um, I've never had this edition. I do have the first printing. And uh, this is Batman the Killing Joke. This is the... I had to look this up because I wasn't sure what the color was with the different colors of the Batman killing joke and the, um, what do you call it on here? The, uh, the pins and stuff like that. They're all mean different printings, but I think this light yellow is the seventh printing. 
Um, not the rare nine printing. The ninth printing is worth, I think, the most. Uh, but for seven fifty, you can't go wrong with that, you know. And it's uh, it's a really nice shape as well. Um, how are we doing on time? Wow, fifteen minutes. Okay. Trying to uh, to get through this. All right, and then the last three books from Brick House I ended up picking up. Marvel Superheroes Contest of Champions. <coughs> Excuse me. The whole mini series. Three, two, and of course, issue number one. They're all new stands. Um, right? Yeah. All new stands. They had it listed for um, three, six, nine, I think 18 bucks. So um, nine bucks total for the lot. This is the original Marvel, um, like, I guess, crossover event. We have Superheroes Contest of Champions, and then Marvel Secret Wars was the second one. So this was the original, uh, excuse me, the original crossover event. This one featured the, uh, I believe it was the Beyonder. So a uh, really good one to, to read, you know, if you ever get a chance, pick it up. Uh, I have to read the whole, I've only read issue one, but issue one was really good. So, um, that was all the books from, from Brick House. And then, um, we'll finish off. There we go. All right. And we'll finish off the last section. Like they always do when they do the comic crawls is always at Sarge's in, uh, new, I think new London. Yeah, I think cause it's, you know, not really closer for some of the other guys, but it's closer for us, you know, for us Rhode Islanders to finish it off there. So it was nice, but they always finish it off at New London, uh, Sarge's comic shop, really cool comic shop. If you've never been there, um, I've been there once before, but I've never been to the basement. So they close it all off for us, uh, to go down to the basement. And there's a lot, I mean, like tons of long boxes there on, um, both sides. We were like, like about 20 of us sitting there buried <laughs> in comics looking for, uh, just looking for some cool gems. And um, basically, you can grab whatever, short box, long box, worth the comics, and you bring it upstairs, and then the owner kind of just throws out a price. And uh, for the most part, it's a pretty, pretty good price. So I ended up getting, right, so like I said, the last comic shop we finished off at was at Sarge's. And we went down into the basement, and like I said, there was about 20 of us down there. <laughs> and it was cramped. It was musty in there. It was just, you know, musty, dusty, you name it. But we were all crawling in there in tight spaces trying to find those gems. So uh, I ended up getting about 29 books there. Not too much. Some people came out with a long box. But um, I didn't want to take home too many books. I already had, you know, I knew I was going to bring over a decent amount home. But um, 29 books ended up costing me 20 bucks there. The first place cost me 200 bucks, with um, Saga number one being the most pricey one at 50 bucks. So I spent all in all 220 bucks. So I'll show you off the 29 books I got at Sarge's. And we'll start off with the book I got <laughs> the most copies of. Um, not really sure why, <laughs> but I was digging through. A long box of Batman books and uh, I saw a bunch of these and I was like all right well these are gonna be dirt cheap and um, you know I'll be able to at least pay off a good chunk of it with buying some of these so uh, first book <laughs> there we go <laughs> 90s goodness right here from 92 this is Batman sort of Azrael book number one um, and I got one Two, three, four, five, <laughs> six, seven, eight copies. Eight copies of Batman, <laughs> sort of Azrael, number one. Uh, don't know why. I saw just a ton. And it was like, you know, some people were grabbing multiples of certain book. This was me. This was my multiples of one book. Um, 
some of these are in actually pretty nice shape. And um, I think the book alone in the raw condition in a decent shape goes from anywhere from like five, if you get like a near mint plus to $25, depending on condition. So a couple of these books will pay for this haul that I'm going to show you now. And uh, if I see one that's in like crispy 9.8 potential, I'll send it off a grading. Because um, this in a 9.8 probably goes for around the 120 to $150 range. So uh, that, that'll definitely go a long way. And I did notice that some of these, the um, Batman uh, symbol there is slightly different color. Uh, so like, oh, perfect example. So you can see this one. Two different two different shades, which I don't think means anything because I checked none of them are new stand. They're all direct editions. Uh, but I, I did notice that. So I thought that was interesting. Um, if you're not familiar with this book, this is obviously the first appearance of Azrael, uh, which is also the prelude into the Nightfall series, uh, which is a, a fun series. This is only, um, uh, so it says book one. It's a four four book mini mini series. So if you're not familiar with the um, Azrael run, but uh, to start that off, I thought that was pretty funny. Um, so you know, doing the math, twenty nine books for twenty bucks comes out to like seventy cents a book. So people that you know went to the uh, basement, we we found some good books. Um, next one, I've never seen this series before, and it kind of caught my eye. Um, and you'll see it when I'm, and I got Spider Man, the manga, um, issue number 29. If you're not familiar with this series, very, very low print. Some of these were like less than 5,000 printed. Um, these were, I think, retellings from the Japanese um, version of, yeah, Ryochi Akigami. Is that mm -hmm. how you pronounce it? I'm not sure. But, um, had a bunch of these and I picked them all up because these are very difficult to find. Inside is all black and white, beautiful illustrations. This is issue number 28. This was a really cool cover and the interiors inside were awesome. Issue number 27, mm -hmm. you see uh, Spider-Man unmasking and it's a skull, really cool. I almost want to get this graded um, just because it's a really cool cover. I don't. I don't think it's worth much. Some of these books, you know, not, don't get me wrong. Some of these books can catch, fetch a good penny from ten to thirty dollars plus, depending on the uh, the book. If there's anything key or anything like that, just because some of these are very low print. But uh, this this is a cool cover. I might want to get that graded. Um, issue number twenty six. This book I'm definitely getting graded because it's a hypodermic needle cover. Um, I do like collecting these type of covers. I work in the medical field, so this is, you know, this goes hand in hand with me. And the story inside was really good. It was a, obviously a hospital setting. And one of the characters in there was on life support and needed blood transfusion and got some blood transfused from Spider Man. So it was pretty cool. Cool cover. Um, issue number 24. Also a really nice cover. Issue number 23. And then the last one from the run that I had there, they didn't have an issue one. This was issue number 22. So this was like the tail end of the run. I think the series ends at 31. So I had from, you know, 22 to 29. So really cool to pick those up. You know, considering I've never uh, seen those before in the wild. Next book, um, fun series. I do have a I think a few of these issues in the run. This is Infinite Crisis, issue number four. I think it's like a first meetup of, um, I want to say, one of the Blue Beetles with a different Blue Beetle, if I'm not mistaken. Minor key. But, you know, always a fun book to pick up for that run. Um, this book caught my eye. This is... Uh, New X-Men issue number 114. This is uh, another minor key. First appearance of Cassandra Nova. Um, that's really about it. Don't really know too much more about this. This is from the uh, Grant Morrison run. 
So can't pass that up for 69 cents. This book <laughs> definitely caught my eye because it's uh, 90s Foily Madness. Night Watch, issue number one. And if you can see there, it's the hollow foil edition. And I looked this book through, and this thing is crispy. This thing looks like a 9-8 contender. <laughs> I might just send this in just for just for shits and giggles. I'll, I'll send this in just because it looks so clean. Don't know too much about Nightwatch. And uh, I, I think the first appearance of that character was in, like, Web of Spider-Man, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, I couldn't pass that up. Next book. Oh, cool little series. Um, this book had a little bit of spec last year with the um, with the Werewolf by Night series. This is Next Wave Agents of Hate. Got issue number four. And the covers on these are really cool. Issue number three. We got Elsa Bloodstone here at the top. Um, yeah, the covers are really cool. The interior art, not a fan of. Not, not whatsoever. Not, not my style. Um, and this is actually a pretty good read, too, if you've never read this, uh, this series. Um, great cover. This is like a fight promo cover. Issue number two. You got Fin Fang Foom versus Machine Man. And uh, Elsa Bloodstone versus Broccoli Men. And, of course, they did have issue number one. Uh, at Next Wave, Agents of Hate, issue number one. Which is the uh, first team appearance of all these characters here. And another like minor thing, and it's also like the first time you see Elsa Bloodstone's hair is red. Her first appearance, her hair is yellow. I'm blonde, sorry. Um, so uh, you do get that as well. But yeah, the interior art on this thing, not for me. But uh, definitely happy to pick those up. And uh, a few more books to finish up, and then we're done. Uh, like I said, the, where I got those Asriel books, tons of Batman books. So uh, ended up getting some uh, Batman books as well. We got Bear, uh, Batman Year 3. This is issue number 436. First appearance of Tim Drake. Yeah, like a fine condition. Nothing really crazy. Uh, Batman issue number 416. And they also had Batman issue number 414. So, uh, can't go wrong with those. And then we got some indie books to finish off. Uh, this book was hot last year as well. I think it was going for about like fifteen to twenty-five dollars. This is um, Grendel issue number one. This is, I think, the first appearance of the second Grendel. It's a female Grendel. So that was pretty cool. Nice, beautiful cover too. Love that cover. Um. Nope, oh, sorry. Do get one more Marvel book in here. This is a cool uh, pickup because it's like uh, an OG, like cosmic, uh, super strong character. And this is uh, Iceman issue number three. First appearance of Oblivion. So I like to pick up these um, like OG powerful cosmic entities on the low when I can. So I think that's my third or fourth copy of that book. Um, Preacher. Preacher number three. Never seen these books in the wild before. <laughs> uh, I do got to rebag and board these because I ran out of bags and boards. Uh, so Preacher number nine, I think is some minor origin or something in there for that book. And then uh, this book was a little bit more pricier from what I looked up. This is Preacher number 13. Just a cool cover too, like with the white suits and the red tie. So uh, that's it. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed the, uh, the big haul. Um, I had a blast. I want to thank Everett Otto for, uh, from Three Men in the Basement for inviting me to the uh, Secret Comic Crawl. Hopefully there's some more in the future I get invited to. Because I had a great time, great experience. Um, met some great community members that I've never met before. So that's always fun as well. And then um, the guys ended up going out after after Sarge's. They got some food at the, uh, like it was like a wing spot nearby. And they got to hang out for a little bit longer. I ended up going home because it was getting late because we started early. We started at like 9 o'clock. And then the last shop was at like 3 o'clock. So it was a long, an all-day event. Um, so that's it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, hit the thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, Mark Spent the Comics. Out.